What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Today I'm going to be doing the first video in a new series on New Calvinism. So let's delve in. Hello everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Thanks to all of you who participated in the community poll and gave your vote. It was a really close race between New Calvinism and the Manosphere. I actually was going to do two out of the three anyway, so thankfully it worked out well because you guys voted for the two, which I wanted to do series on anyway. So what I'm going to be doing is one video on New Calvinism on Saturdays and then a video on the Manosphere on Wednesdays. So what inspired me to want to do a series on New Calvinism was a video I saw which Pastor Joel Webin uploaded in which he discussed the difference between New Calvinism or what is also known as the Young, Restless, and Reformed movement and the New Reform movement which is gaining ground today. This video is going to be very similar to his. I'm also going to be repeating some of the things which he pointed out in that video. I've provided a link to his original video in the video description below. I would definitely recommend it to you for a fuller treatment. So definition is key. What is old Calvinism? What is new Calvinism? And what is the modern reformed movement, which I have referred to as the modern Puritanism movement? I don't think that they've attached a name for themselves. I've just gave them that label. I don't think it's going to catch on or anything, but it's important to have that label just so we can distinguish and highlight and identify the three different movements. The modern Puritan movement is more or less equivalent to the original old Calvinism from the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Who are some names in the modern Puritan movement? Well, my friend, Pastor Joel Webin, Michael Foster, the pastors at Ogden, Utah, and others. One of the key characteristics of old Calvinism was that it was confessional. Whereas new Calvinism is not really confessional. Let me explain the difference between being confessional and being non-confessional. In old Calvinism, you have four primary groups. I mean, there's more. There are the Anglicans and the Episcopalians. But the four which were very, very key in the old Calvinist movement or the old Puritan movement were the Presbyterians, the Congregationalists, the Reformed Baptists, and the Continental Reformed Christians. Each of these groups of Calvinists were confessional. That means that they adhered to a standard of faith. Now, they all adhered to the old creeds and confessions of the church which uh, all Christians have held to throughout the ages, such as the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, the Chalcedonian Creed, and others. But they also were distinctive in that they held to a particular Reformed Creed or set of Reformed standards. So, for instance, the Presbyterians held to the Westminster Standards, and that included the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Westminster Larger Catechism, and the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Another group known as the Congregationalists were likewise confessional. They held to a statement of faith or a confession, which was known as the Savoy Declaration. The Reformed Baptists were also confessional, and they held to the 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith. The Continental Reformed group which is today primarily seen in the United Reformed Church of North America, but there are other Reformed denominations which could also be considered Reformed who hold to these standards. But the one that I know of and I'm familiar with is the United Reformed Church of North America. And they held or hold to the three forms of unity, which are the Belgic Confession, the Heidelberg Catechism, and the canons of the Synod of Dort. Some, or probably most, of the new Calvinists hold to the five points of Calvinism, although some individuals like Mark Driscoll do not hold to all five points. Uh, he's uncomfortable, I think, with the doctrine of limited atonement. But men like John Piper and Wayne Grudem, who could be considered part of the new Calvinist movement or the Young, Restless, and Reform movement, 
do adhere to the five points of Calvinism. Historically, Calvinism or Reformed theology was much more than simply the five points which were articulated by the framers of the canons of the Synod of Dort. But essentially what that was, was a response to the Dutch Remonstrants, who were disciples of Arminius, and who made five key points, and a group of educated and renowned Calvinists got together and responded to those five points of the Remonstrants, and it became known as the Synod of Dort and collectively in popular Christendom as the five points of Calvinism. But besides that reform standard, the new Calvinists are not really confessional. They are what I would consider to be non-confessional. That means that they do not adhere directly or specifically to one of the great reform confessions like the Westminster Confession or the Savoy Declaration or the London Baptist Confession of Faith. They, I guess you could say, do theology a la carte. Another difference between the old Calvinists and modern Puritans, I put them on one side, versus the new Calvinists is that the old Calvinists and the modern Puritans practice the regulative principle of worship, whereas the new Calvinists are more normative in their view of worship in the divine services. What does regulative versus normative mean? Well, if you practice the regulative principle of worship, then that means that you worship on the Lord's day in a manner which is only commanded by God in scripture. Therefore, you will sing psalms, and generally speaking, you won't have musical instruments in worship services. Whereas if you were normative, you will primarily sing uninspired hymns, and you do have musical instruments in your worship services. Another difference between the old Calvinists and modern Puritans versus the new Calvinists is that the old Calvinists and modern Puritans held to the view of biblical patriarchy when it comes to the duties of men and women in the church, in the family, and in society. Whereas the new Calvinists are primarily complementarian. Now, this is really important. I think I'll do an entire video on complementarianism alone, a standalone video on it, because it's first clearly articulated by two new Calvinists, Dr. John Piper and Dr. Wayne Grudem, and I believe it's their 1988 title, Biblical Manhood and Womanhood. Another difference between the two groups is cessationism versus continuationism. The old Calvinists were cessationists, as are the modern Puritans, and the new Calvinists, at least many of them, such as John Piper and Wayne Grudem, who I mentioned earlier, are continuists. That means that they believe that the apostolic sign gifts continued after the end of the apostolic age. So who are some big names in the new Calvinist movement? Well, you've got John Piper and Wayne Grudem. You've got perhaps Sam Storms. You've got Mark Driscoll, you've got Matt Chandler, and many others. So what I'll be doing in the future is I will attempt to do a standalone video on each individual teacher. So I hope that helps you out. All right, guys, that's a wrap for now. Ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week, and for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.